This video is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Reviews. I'm Ryan and today we're going to be looking at the Mercedes EQE SUV 350 Plus and we're going to be taking a look at its charging curve from 0 to 100%. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'd like to go ahead and just run through this entire charging clip with you. We can see that we immediately start at 163 kilowatts and we see the charging speed slowly ramp up from there. The EQE SUV is actually receiving 500 amps through this entire time frame. The amps are steady, but as the pack charges, its voltage increases, which means it's charging at a higher power. The, that 500 amps is actually the limitation of CCS hardware, so this is actually charging at just about as fast as we could expect this battery to charge. You'll see right around 11 minutes that I switch clips. The charging station actually had a fault, uh, but I was able to restart the charging test. I lined up the clips perfectly, so this should be an accurate representation of the EQE SUV charging curve. If you're curious, you can add 27 kilowatt hours to the energy delivered in the top right of this clip. Now, it's been holding a flat charging curve this entire time, all the way through to just about 45%, where we saw a peak of 183 kilowatts, and then it just finally starts to taper. And I think that's really nuts. It held 500 amps for, what, almost 18 minutes? And this taper is actually really quite gradual. I think now is a really great time to talk about charging speed. I think this charging curve is really, really impressive on a technical level. However, if you're just talking about numbers, 170, 180 kilowatts isn't that high of a peak. I mentioned this earlier, but the EQE SUV charges at 500 amps, and this is the limit for CCS hardware. For those who might not know, power is equal to volts times amps. Amps are already maxed out in this case, for, so the only way to increase charging power on this EQE would be to increase voltage. And actually, you can see that within Mercedes' own lineup. The Mercedes EQS has a really similar battery, but it's bigger. It has more modules and therefore a higher voltage. When you plug it in to charge at a fast charger, you'll receive the same 500 amps, but with the extra module, the higher voltage, you'll reach peak charging speeds just over 200 kilowatts. With that being said, 200 kilowatts isn't all that impressive anymore, and this is where vehicles with 800 volt architectures can get a big advantage. It's possible to reach higher charging speeds without maxing out amperage because voltage is much higher on an 800 volt architecture vehicle. I do want to be very clear. We can't just go out and make a blanket statement and say 800 volt vehicles charge better. We cannot say that. There's a lot that goes into charging and between just the curve, thermal management, efficiency, just to name a few factors that go into what, what makes a good charging vehicle. However, there definitely are some advantages that can be realized with 800 volt architectures. We're starting to wrap up the charging session and charging speeds really slow down and die off about 80%, which is pretty typical. Let's now take a look at the actual charging curve. And here we can see it, kilowatts versus state of charge. And like we saw, it starts at 163 kilowatts and holds a very flat curve. As we discussed earlier, the flat part is holding just about 500 amps. and power slowly increases as the battery gains charge. It holds this flat period to nearly 50%. We don't see a taper until 48% state of charge, and it's really quite a slow taper. It's really great behavior all the way to just about 80% state of charge, where it then finally really dies off. But let's put this in context with some other competitors. I've included a lot of competition, both crossovers and SUVs, and like I mentioned earlier, the just about 180 kilowatt peak is not particularly impressive. Several vehicles reach well over 200 kilowatts. 
Mercedes EQS, Tesla Model Y, the Model S, eGMP vehicles, they all reach well over uh, 200 kilowatts. However, the impressive part is actually over here in the 40 to 80% range. It's not the best charging vehicle, but it's definitely near the top. I will say it's bested by eGMP vehicles and the Porsche Taycan, but come on, those are some of the best charging vehicles on the market right now. It's really quite a good curve, even if the peak isn't super high. Next, I'd like to take a look at the 70 mile per hour range versus time graph. And this is my personal favorite graph because it really shows you what you're going to see in the real world. How much real world range will you get for a charging stop of any given amount of time? And here we've got the EQE SUV. It's of course a very typical charging curve. At first, we've got a steep, flat part of the slope, and this is where the vehicle's gaining charge very quickly at low states of charge. We see as it moves on, the slope slowly decreases and starts to level out. This is showing that charging speeds tend to decrease and slow down when you're near at the top of the pack. Next, let's take a look at some vehicles, and when you compare it with some competition, I have to be honest, I'm kind of a bit disappointed. Yeah, it is near the middle of the pack, kind of, but I'd say it's a bit more toward the back, more than I would like. In fact, it performs pretty poorly for the first 15 to 20 minutes, and this is a combination of multiple factors. First, efficiency is just not that great. Uh, I guess that can be somewhat expected for a relatively large uh, crossover SUV. However, if this were a more efficient vehicle, it would have a similar shape to the charging curve. It would just be stretched out taller. Imagine you've got a picture on the computer and you grab the two little bars in the middle and you just stretch it out. That's what the charging curve would look like. The second reason why it didn't perform very well at first is it just doesn't have a very high peak charging speed. Like we said, only 180 kilowatts. However, we can see the benefit of a good charging curve if you continue to look. It continues to charge at a relatively high charging speed in the middle of the pack, so it actually gains some ground and performs decently well as long as you're planning a 25 plus minutes charging stop. One thing I do want to clarify, there are vehicles that charge way, way, way worse than this. For example, just take a look at the Chevy Bolt down there. But Again, realistically, this is not the best, but it's not terrible. A 20-minute charging stop should give you about 150 miles of real-world range, just about two hours of driving at 70 miles per hour. It's not great, but not terrible. I would say it's definitely acceptable. Well, that's just about all I have for you guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. I enjoy going into depth with all this, looking at all the details and all the comparisons. I'm looking forward to seeing what everyone has to say, and yeah, really impressed with this charging curve itself, but the real world performance is another story. I'll see you guys all in the next one.